champions in that division. You got Scott Quinn, Carl Frampton, here on Rick and Diaz. I'm gonna get the opportunity, boy. You working your ass off, don't you? Hey, that's what we do. That's what we do. Y'all the best in the nation. I see it, baby. Y'all the man. That's, that's what it is. I love, I love what you're doing for boxing. Thank you, man. Don't stop. Keep on going strong. Keep on going hard. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So the alien Bernard Hopkins returns against another tough opponent while Bernard Hopkins is in his 50s. Unbelievable career that Bernard Hopkins had as a former middleweight champion, a middleweight champion who jumped up to the light heavyweight division and beat top-notch champions at the lightweight division. Matter of fact, he beat the best light heavyweight at the time, Antonio Tarver. An unbelievable career. And once again, to finish off your career by facing not just some tomato can, but facing a tough, young, strong lion that just came off of his biggest win, who knocked out the man, who knocked out the man, if you guys don't understand what I mean, Joe Smith, he knocked out Fonfara after Fonfara had basically gained momentum, knocking out Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Now Joe Smith, he gets in the ring with a legend, and Bernard Hopkins is once again in the ring with a young, dangerous opponent. Unbelievable career when it comes to Bernard Hopkins. I mean, you know, a lot of people talk about him holding the record of defenses at the middleweight title, but it's not just the fact that he held the record. It's the opponents that he faced at the middleweight division and the light heavyweight division. I mean, names like the undefeated champion at the time, the middleweight champion at the time, Keith Holmes, which Bernard Hopkins unified the middleweight belts by defeating Keith Holmes. I go way back to when Bernard Hopkins fought the undefeated knockout artist Joe Lipsy. I remember watching this guy on Tuesday Night Fights. He was knocking out everyone. He was one of the most dangerous opponents that Bernard Hopkins had faced up into that time. Bernard Hopkins went in there and he knocked him out cold. Let's talk about some of the bigger names that Bernard Hopkins faced. Fighters like Roy Jones Jr., John David Jackson, Glenn the Road Warrior Johnson, Felix Tito Trinidad. Felix, a fighter who was favored to destroy and kill Bernard Hopkins in the ring. When Bernard Hopkins had fought Felix Trinidad, no one gave Bernard Hopkins a chance at all because Felix Trinidad was knocking out everyone. Felix Trinidad had moved up to the junior middleweight division. He knocked out the undefeated David Reed and the undefeated Fernando Vargas. Then he moved up to the middleweight division and knocked out the undefeated William Joppy. William Joppy, who was another beast at the time, Felix Trinidad, he knocked him out, just basically walked over him. So when Felix Trinidad was supposed to fight Hopkins, no one gave Hopkins a chance. Everyone thought Bernard Hopkins was going to get knocked out by Felix Trinidad. And of course, it was Hopkins that completely dominated Trinidad. And that was his coming out party when he beat Tito Trinidad. So moving on, you have other fighters like Antonio Magic Man Tarver, who we all know the man is known for knocking out Roy Jones Jr. Bernard Hopkins, he jumps up from the middleweight division to the light heavyweight division and beats Antonio Tarver. Then you have Kelly Pavlik, another guy that was expected to annihilate Bernard Hopkins. Hopkins beats him, and Hopkins beats John Pascal, Chad Dawson, and Oscar De La Hoya. Another fighter who thought that Bernard Hopkins was perfect for the taking. Matter of fact, Oscar De La Hoya, uh, he took that fight right after Bernard Hopkins was heavily criticized by people like Larry Merchant because Hopkins was in the ring with some Middle Eastern fighter, I forget the guy's name, but it was one of those mandatories, and this guy was just 
hopping around the ring the whole night, and Hopkins had to chase him down. Now, and it's crazy because usually when a, when a fighter just moves all night, they blame it on the fighter. They blame it on the guy who's moving around the ring, right? And they say, you know, that guy, he just ran and et cetera, et cetera. But of course, because Bernard Hopkins is on a coincidental list, he got blamed for fighting a guy that was constantly moving and he had to chase. This is when um, you guys, um, some of you guys may recall, this is when Larry Merchant, you know, he basically says some very unprofessional, disrespectful things to Bernard Hopkins, telling him how we don't want to see fights like this. And he went in a little bit deeper, but I'm just paraphrasing. But it was really, really disrespectful uh, what Larry Merchant said to Bernard Hopkins. Now, after that performance, a lot of people thought just by listening to what Larry Merchant and Jim Lampley were saying about Bernard Hopkins, a lot of people thought that Hopkins was done and faded. They thought he was past his prime just because of that performance, which wasn't his fault. Once again, you had a guy that didn't really come to fight that night. So this is when Oscar De La Hoya, he said, you know what, I'll fight this guy because Bernard Hopkins, he had been calling out De La Hoya for quite some time. And Oscar De La Hoya, he had always ignored Bernard Hopkins challenging him. But soon as Bernard Hopkins looked like he was slowing down and he was fading, that's when Oscar De La Hoya said, you know what, I'll go ahead and fight him. Ain't no way I'm letting a guy near 40 years old beat me. This is what Oscar De La Hoya said. And of course, we know Bernard Hopkins was the first man to knock out Oscar De La Hoya. So, you know, with that all being said, Bernard Hopkins has had an unbelievable career. I mean, to be in your 50s and possibly be the favorite over Joe Smith, a guy who just came off of his biggest knockout win, that says it all about Bernard Hopkins. So, you know, this fight is going to be aired on HBO. It's on December 17th, and it should be a fun fight. It should be a fun fight. I mean, Joe Smith, he has a type of style that seems to be tailor-made for Bernard Hopkins. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Bernard Hopkins surprises people and gets a knockout in this fight. <laughs> and I wouldn't be surprised if Bernard Hopkins gets a knockout and then starts talking about fighting until he's 60 because clearly Bernard Hopkins loves to fight. You in your 50s and you still don't want to hang it up. That says a lot. So that's pretty much all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. Hi, you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation.